Satellites have changed our lives in many ways that we rarely even think about. This morning alone, satellites helped me check the weather, find a nearby cafe, but what happens when a satellite breaks or becomes obsolete and we don't need it anymore? It adds to the orbiting graveyard of dead scraps of metal. The final frontier is packed with rubbish. Right now, floating above our heads, are an estimated 128 million pieces of space junk. The potential disaster arising from an impact is serious. But Australian scientists are at the forefront of efforts to ensure that doesn't happen. I've come to Mount Stromlo Observatory to meet Dr Craig Smith of EOS Space Systems. So you're the space junk guru. Tell me about what's up there. Space junk is all of the, I call it flotsam and jetsam, of our use of outer space for the last 50 odd years. So it's bits of rocket bodies, um, hatches, explosive bolts, but all human made stuff that we've just dumped in space, ranging from the size of a fleck of paint up to the things the size of a bus. So how big does something have to be to cause damage? Things in orbit are travelling about 30,000 kilometres per hour, so they've got a massive amount of kinetic energy. So something as small as a five cent piece will just punch a hole straight through a satellite and pretty much destroy it. So what's the worst case scenario with space debris collisions? So back in 1979, the guys um, Kessler and Coeur Palais came up with a theory that um, if there's enough space junk up there, then in, in particular orbits, then you can end up with a self-sustaining cascade of collisions, space debris crashing with space debris, which each crash makes another few hundred to thousand pieces and that goes on. Eventually you have so much junk up there that parts of orbital space become unusable. To try to solve the problem of space junk, First, you need to know where it is and if it's on course for a collision. To do this, Craig and his team use a combination of a powerful telescopic camera and laser tracking system. First, the telescope finds the piece of space junk and locks onto it. A laser is then fired at it, and by measuring the time it takes for the light to return to Earth, they can tell the speed and direction of the space junk and track its movement. Oh, so we found something. What have we got here? So we're tracking now part of a rocket body from a US Delta a launch vehicle, and this is a 15 centimetre fragment. Wow, so this is debris from a rocket that was launched before I was born that we're still tracking. Yes. Around the world, efforts are being made to not just track, but reduce space junk. Techniques from harpoons to nets, and even magnets are being trialled. And here at Mount Stromlo, they're planning to unveil a powerful new laser with the capacity to alter the course of space junk. So how can a laser actually move something that's thousands of kilometres away up in space? Well, I've got my little $2 laser here and my fake bit of space junk. And when I shine the laser on the space junk, it is actually exerting a force. The light is like a whole bunch of tiny little bullets all travelling at the speed of light. Now, I'd never feel that here because this laser is just not nearly powerful enough. But imagine I have a laser that's 20 million times stronger. Now we're getting a big enough laser to land enough energy onto the target to actually give it a push. So you're able to track the things so accurately that you know when they're going to collide and shoot the laser at them just to shove them a tiny bit to avoid a collision, you just need to stop two objects being in the same 3D space for about a millisecond. The hope is that within only a few months, a laser shot from this dome behind me will have the capacity to shift space junk. Eventually, as lasers get more powerful, the plan is to knock space junk out of the sky completely. Avoiding any unintentional collision is a good thing in space. Every object is just thousands of smaller objects waiting to happen. <laughs>